welcome to this brief review of a poster entitled Early Experience with Broad Panel Genetic Testing in Pre- and Post-Transplant Evaluation of Patients with Kidney Failure, presented at the American Society of Nephrology Kidney Week 2021 by lead author Rupinder Sodhi of Loyola University Medical Center. Uh, also contributing to this effort were Dr. Desai, Dr. Yu, Dr. Arwindakar, and Dr. Akina at Loyola, as well as myself, Katya Brosart, and Dr. Jose Tabriziani at Natera. Here's a glimpse of the poster in its entirety as it was presented at ASM, and I'll walk through each of these sections. To provide a bit of background for this poster, Genetic testing is increasingly recognized as playing an important role in kidney transplantation. Genetic assessment during the pre-kidney transplant workup really informing both the estimation of the risk of recurrent kidney disease after tra transplant and also informing better decisions about living-related kidney donor selection. Here we describe an academic transplant center's early experience with Renocyte genetic testing. This is a more than 380 gene kidney disease panel that utilizes next generation sequencing with variant confirmation via independent or orthogonal methods. In figure one, you can see here the workflow from the Renocyte test, starting with patient identification to sample collection using either a blood or a saliva swab sample. Next, moving on to that next generation sequencing and analysis of the more than 380 genes on the panel, each of which has a 99% or higher detection rate for that gene. And lastly, results which are available within three to four weeks. Looking at methods, 26 patients, 18 of whom were pre-kidney transplant and eight of whom were post-kidney transplant, underwent genetic testing at this center between June 2020 and April 2021. They ranged in age from 28 to 67 years with a median age of 31. Genetic testing results were correlated to clinical histories, including biopsy when available, as well as ultrasound results, presence of proteinuria and hematuria, demographic factors, family history, and comorbidities. Certified genetic counselors were available to interpret results and also provide consultation to patients upon request. To review the results, positive findings were identified in 38.5% of patients, or 10 out of 26, and these positive findings confirmed clinical disease in one individual, identified a subcategory of clinical disease in two, reclassified disease for three, and established a molecular diagnosis in four individuals. Six out of the eight post-kidney transplant patients had no pathogenic variants identified, and two of these had biopsy-proven glomerular disease that recurred early after kidney transplant. So this implicated a non-inherited cause of renal disease. Identification of positive pathogenic variants in 75% or three out of four pre-kidney transplant patients evaluated for a living-related donor transplantation prompted that subsequent evaluation of the intended donors. This table shows the positive genetic findings in 10 patients. There were three patients with a positive finding in the TTR gene associated with uh, hereditary transthyretin-related amyloidosis following an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. There were in total four patients with positive findings associated with various inheritance patterns of Alport syndrome with call for alpha gene findings. And these ranged from X-linked to autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive inheritance patterns. There was one patient with a positive finding in the PKD1 gene associated with polycystic kidney disease one following an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. And one patient uh, identified as having a call 11 alpha one gene variant associated with Stickler syndrome following autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. 
Lastly, there was one patient with an INF2 genetic variant associated with focal segmental glomerular sclerosis 5 or Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease E and following an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. In conclusion, the relatively high rate of positive findings among this cohort of patients awaiting kidney transplant indicates that this may be a population at increased risk for monogenic disease. The clinical implications of genetic diagnoses in this cohort also were multifaceted. There was potential to influence living donor selection, identify family members who themselves may be at increased risk for kidney failure, and to enable early diagnosis and intervention and better assessment of the likelihood of, of recurrence of disease post-transplant. Thank you.